Hello everybody, Yom Tov. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still um, feeling a little bit tender in that the other day from when I was at the dentist. Um, I just thought I'd give you an update because I've received some lovely, like, hope you get on to the dentist, well wishes uh, in a lot of the YouTube comments. So I just wanted to publicly thank everyone who wished me well and thought well of me. That was really, really kind of you. Um, I must admit, I'm recovering quite well, considering what went on. Um, I just thought I would make you laugh by um, telling you what happened to me on Tuesday afternoon. Well, there was this huge song and dance about me having radiotherapy 20 years ago. And um, because apparently, I didn't know this, but it's a well-known fact that um, radiotherapy, you know, plays havoc with your teeth and your gums and things like that. Well, yes, I've had a lot of awful trouble with that in that department over the last 20 years, but that's another story, not for now. But, as you know, I, was, I had this toothache and it turned out it was a bit of root um, and I didn't see my regular dentist. I saw a newly qualified dentist. It was really wonderful. Really lovely fella, young boy, or well, young compared to me. Um, and this lovely dental nurse. And um, anyway, he went and he had a look, and he said, um, "Right, we're gonna have to, you know, sort out how we're gonna get this out." So I said, "Well." Look, whatever you can do to stop the pain, you know, just please, can you do it? Well, a year and a half ago, the tooth that's beside this, where I was having the pain, the back of it had fallen off. And, um, you know, if you think I was cracking nuts or anything when this happened, no. Um, I think I was eating ice cream. You know, it was something really soft, I don't know it was that. Um anyway my regular dentist um backed it all up and what have you and um made it all nice and new again. Well the back came off during the lockdown and it wasn't really bothering me as such. You could, couldn't tell there was a problem. So this new dentist said, um, actually, you know, while I'm here, um, I'm not happy about the state of that tooth. And I don't think it's worth it backing it up the way Graham did. I think the best thing to do is for it to come out. All right. He said, yeah, I said, the, the, I think the best thing for, for it to do is for it to come out. And um, I said, well, that's going to leave me with a gap down there. And I just briefly explained that I had a YouTube channel and what have you. And, you know, I'm not vain, but, you know, I'm... You know, well you, well, you know where I'm coming from. Oh, he said, oh, you shouldn't be able to notice it. And then I thought, right, well, he's going to go in with this and he's obviously going to have to use something to get this, whatever it is, out that was left behind. It turns out it was a bit of root that was left behind, which hadn't caused me any problems for a year and a half. But of course, it'll come back to life. 
he comes back to me with a chisel. This is not a word of a lie. It was some kind of little medical chisel. And there was the long piece of, you know, the metal. And then there was this, like, this round disc like a washer. And then a little gap and then the handle. And I hadn't quite got as numb as I'd wanted to. And he'd gone in with his chisel. And he caught the inside of my lip and pressed right down. Well, <clears throat> I sort of squealed a little bit at that. So he gave me some more numbing stuff and waited a little while. And then proceeded to dig this root out with this small chisel. And it was only a tiny, thin thing. Because I did ask him, I said, what is that? And he said, oh, it's a chisel. Uh, uh, okay. So, anyway, what he got out was about the size of my fingernail. Right. That says my fingernail. That's, that's about the length of it. But that, that was causing all the problems. And then he said, oh, he said digging that out was a bit of a hole. But you know, it'll all it'll be all right, it'll be fine, it'll heal up nicely. So he said, right, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take this tooth out now. And I just expected him to go in with the pliers, twist and pull the way they do. And he didn't. He proceeded to dig my tooth out with this chisel. And... I had to keep keeping my head back and keeping my head back. Well, I can't push my head back that far. And so, as you can imagine, today I've got like, like yesterday it was just recovering. Today I've got like this really sore neck. Um. I mean, he did eventually get the pliers, twist it, pull it a bit, but didn't finish it off like that. He dug everything out with his chisel to make absolutely sure that none of it, nothing snapped off, nothing was left behind. I mean, that guy was digging for victory. And this is not a word of a lie on the lives of my children. By the time I got out of that chair, I mean, I'd already, my legs had already started shaking. And he was saying to me, are you all right? And I'm going, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then my arms started shaking and my hands started shaking. And I had to sit for a bit. And then, you see, what I'd done was I'd, because hubby has now been asked to go back into work. So he couldn't come with me. So I'd ask my kids if they would come with me, wheel me in. And then go back and sit in the car. There was cars just outside. They had my phone. So after a few minutes, I was still shaking a bit, but I wasn't as bad. And then they rang for them to come and fetch me, which they did. And then I went and sat in the car, and I kid you not, I sat there for a good half hour to the quarters of an hour before I could really feel it in control driving home from the dentist. And um, yesterday when I got up, well, it was very early yesterday morning when I woke up and you know how we all have puffy eyes but this time it wasn't the lymphedema that was bothering me it was just this whole side of my face was swollen this lip, lip was all swollen and, and um, that's what it was like I was I mean, I'll be honest with you, I didn't get time to do a true crime video the other day, on Monday. 
because to be honest with you, by the time I got round to, um, I mean, it was three videos out on Monday, I was shot at. So, obviously, I was in bed early and couldn't sleep, though, with, with the, it was just, my mouth was so painful. But anyway, um, and they're going to give me a call back in a couple of weeks just to see how I'm getting on and get rated for how well they did. Now, keep in mind, that's my community dentist and that's the place where I go, whether it's a big enough place to take wheelchairs. So I've got to rate them well because if I don't, there aren't any ordinary dentists that will take me because a lot of them aren't wheelchair accessible. But the community dentist is. So I've got to rate them really well. And I mean, don't get me wrong, this young dentist is such a pleasant lad and so friendly and kind and what have you, but my god by the time i came out that chair i felt as if i was in a literal punch bag so it's still an all around here it's still tender but at least the pain that i've got now is like recovery pain you know and anybody who's had a tooth out you know what that that pain's like you just got to be careful um, so I'm still drinking tea through stop. I mean, I'm trying to say no hot drinks really for 24 to 48 hours. Um, so I've been drinking sort of mild cups of tea, mild cups of coffee and that through a straw. You know, warm cups of hot chocolate. I mean, oh God, I've suffered. I have suffered. Obviously. Um, um, I, I do have something else to um, relate to you today, um, something that I read in Lady C's book. Um, And there's just one thing that I wanted to um, say to you all first, if you don't mind, before I start. Um, telling you about this thing with your friend and, um, and well, not your friend and definitely not mine, Meghan Markle. But I, I need to tell you something. I got a message this morning from um, two of the daughter, two of Lorraine's daughters, to say that on Tuesday, which was the same day I went into the dentist, she went in to have some scan results. And her um, oncologist has given her two to three weeks. So, the girls are devastated. They sent a message to our other friend, John, same time as they messaged me. So I spent most of the morning talking to John and comforting him. And then what made me break down was when one of our daughters said, 
um, she's coming home either at the end of the weekend or the start of next week. Would you like to come down and say your goodbyes? I can't drive that far anymore. I mean, she lives 300 miles away. And, uh, I can't drive 30 miles without problems now. So I had to tell her daughters that I can't. I want to. But I can't. But Bill can't take me. So I got that news today. But I would ask you please. Would you continue to pray for her? So that her passing is painless. Apparently it's everywhere. It's gone everywhere. I mean, that's two to three weeks. You know. That's a, just a rough guess. I don't know what to tell you. I've been frightened of this day coming. So, one thing I do want to do, and on her behalf, I want to thank you, each and every one of you, who has offered prayers for her recovery. They say miracles happen last minute, but the doctors have stopped her treatment. And said it's not worth putting her through anymore. The last time she was able to talk to me was 11 days ago. Anyway, um, I I want to tell you I've come to a part in Lady C's book, <clears throat> and um, there's something I wanted to read to you that she says. Actually, I don't know whether I'm in breach of copyright or not, so I think I better paraphrase. So I've got the book on my phone. <clears throat> I mean, that's, that's the book on my phone now. Um, it basically says that after Britain's Channel 5 um, put up the, uh, a documentary about Thomas Markle, Everybody was very perplexed as to why she wasn't speaking to him. And he didn't know why. Nobody else could figure out why. And then Lady C says that she received a telephone call from a very, very eminent well-connected aristocrat who was a 
big friend of Harry's. Um, and she was asked, did she want to know the real reason as to why Meghan had stopped talking to her father? So Lady C said, of, of course she did, she wanted to know why. And then she said that this informant said that the truth was so awful that she couldn't bring herself to say the words. And Lady C said that if there's an allegation to be made as a as an author, as a writer, she can't write things that could end up she could end up being sued for. And it was this person was saying to her, you know, you've got to feel sorry for poor Megan and poor Harry. And you know, we don't know what's in your book, but once we tell you this, I'm sure that you'll, be, you'll do nothing but be able to sympathise with Megan and her predicament. Um, and she apparently, this person informed Lady C that Harry believed that the information that she was about to be given was completely true. And Lady C said she was asked to guess what the worst thing a daughter could have against her father. And um, Lady C actually said that she wasn't going to guess. She doesn't play word games and that she wanted to be told directly, put it into one word, what is it that is the problem? Why has Megan stopped talking to her father? And the one word was interference. And Lady C goes on to say that how is it that just before she met Prince Harry, she was full of praise for all the parenting skills our father had given her and how much she loved him and how much everybody should have a father like her father. How could she now try and get the narrative changed to fit this new scenario that I mean they, they tried to pers this person tried to persuade Lady C to believe that it was basically allegedly for entertainment purposes only that Megan had claimed that her father had interfered with her. Now it doesn't make sense, guys, does it? It really doesn't make sense. And she told the person that Harry couldn't possibly believe such a terrible thing and that if he did, then You know, it was, it's all about our lying. And, you know, it's basically Lady C is allegedly calling Meghan Markle out as a brazen, brazen liar. And I keep saying allegedly because I don't want to be sued. And that's why I didn't read out all the passage. Because, you know, I don't know how much I'm allowed to read out. I mean, it's on my Kindle. 
um, but I don't know how much I'm allowed to read out of Lady C's book. But that's just to let you know that near the end of the book, Lady C's book, that to put wrap all this up into a nutshell, allegedly, well no, it isn't alleged, it's in the book, but an eminent aristocrat who is a great dear friend of Harry's went to Lady C on Harry and Meghan's behalf to say that the reason why Meghan wasn't talking to her father anymore is because of the word interference and the aristocratic friend told Lady C to use that word in the worst possible way that a daughter could accuse a father. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember watching a speech from Meghan Markle in 2015 and she told the world how wonderful her father was. How come in 2020 he's now We are, we are expected to believe that um, allegedly is the P word. Now, I don't know about you, but that does not make sense to me and I don't believe a single solitary word of it. If she could be so low is to lie about a father. You know, and I mean the thing is, what I don't get is why did Harry never meet him? Why did Harry never insist on meeting him? Why was he just content with phone calls? I mean, you're going to marry the guy's daughter, you've met the mother. Why haven't you gone to meet the father? I mean, the man was going to give her away. So, if that's the sort of person... I mean, they were trying... I mean, the camp was trying to affect the narrative as far as Lady C was concerned. And this is before Lady C's book came out. They were trying to affect the narrative. Lady C was having none of it. And she's written about it in the book. And I'm just saying allegedly because I don't know where I stand with regards to copyright as to reading stuff out. But that's what she's written. So if you do get a copy of, um, is it Harry and Meghan or Meghan and Harry? Harry and Meghan, the real story. I think that's what it's called, Lady Colin Campbell. If any of you out there have got a copy of the book, if you go, it's very near to, it's, well, on my phone Kindle, it's location 693, no, location 6926, and it's at 98%. So, that's the sort of person that married into our royal family who will tell atrocious lies like that. I think we're well rid of her. And for those who think she's amazing, there's nothing I can say to you because nothing is going to change your mind about her. You are going to think she's amazing. Well, I know every time I mention her and I'm not kind about her, my video gets marked down. Well, you know, if any of you sugars are watching this because I'm mentioning her name, then feel free to mark it down if you want. 
but I know Lady Colin Campbell's not a liar. Because she's not, she holds her integrity far too high. But I do know Meghan Markle's a liar. And, uh, I mean, I've read all the, the daft stories about the moon bump and the surrogate and all that sort of thing. And at one point I used to think, oh, they're all just conspiracy theories. Now I'm not so sure. I doubt everything I hear about that woman. I've got to. I can't believe a thing that comes out of her mouth. Harry is married to a liar. And a bold, brazen, bare-faced liar at that. I'll tell you something, if Thomas Markle knew that was what she said about him, it would break his bloody heart. I, I, I don't know where she gets the brass neck to say half the things she does. But anyway, that's what I wanted to tell you today. And I think I've probably gone over my time in talking to you. So anyway, I am going to upload this now. And then... I'm going to be working on your true crime tonight, so you'll be getting two videos out of me tonight. And then you've got your um, spooky sessions tomorrow. So, anyway, I just wanted to give you those updates. And, um, sorry, I'm still, I've been taking some strong painkillers as well. As, uh, my aura morph today and I'm just I'm just still feeling a little bit tender you know but um, don't worry I will no doubt be bouncing back to health you know by I mean I'll, I'm definitely better than I was yesterday there's no way I could have come on camera yesterday Um. And I'm sure that I'll be better again for the spooky sessions tomorrow. And I am absolutely dead certain that I'll be, you know, jumping around for joy on Monday. Um, but anyway, thank you again, guys. And again, I want to say thank you to everybody who wished me well. You're all lovely, lovely people. And you're really very kind. And I don't take what you do for me for granted. So I really do appreciate that. And like I said. I would like it if you would like the video please. Because it does make me smile when I see the likes I get. I don't know maybe it's a little bit of an ego trip for me. I, I just. I just feel as if I've done something right, you know, and when, when my videos get downgraded, which, you know, loads of much more important channels than me get downgraded as well, but someone like me, it, it can, like, knock me well off, and, because I've got such a, a small, tiny corner of YouTube, you see, anyway. I'm going to say bye-bye for now, guys, and see you in the next video, uh, which is your true crime. So I shall see you again very, very soon. Take care. Love you. Bye-bye for now. Bye, guys.